Hey YouTube, this is a video on computing the asymptotic complexity of the following code fragment. So here we have the following code fragment in red, and there's two main things that we need to know. One is the cost of each statement, and the amount of times that each of these statements are ran. So first we have this uh, i equals 1, there we go, so we have i equals 1 and the cost may be some unit of time that we don't know so we just put a c for a constant and we're going to say it's a subscript one because it's going to be many constants and it's ran one time and same here sum equals zero uh, it has a cost that we don't know we we'll call it c subscript two because it may be different from the first one and it runs one time next here we have a while loop while i is less than or equal to n um, i equals one and it increases by one each time so this runs n plus one time and this may take some constant unit of time we'll call it c3 now you may think why does this run n plus one time and not n well the check itself has to check the very last um, number to know when to execute so for example if n equal three then it's a run from uh, i equals 1, so we said it's 1 less than or equal to 3, we'll say yes, go through the while loop. i increases, it becomes 2, is 2 less than or equal to 3, yes, go through the while loop. And now i equals 3, is 3 less than or equal to 3, yes, go through the while loop. So it needs to know when to stop. And on this last one here, i becomes 4, is i less than or equal to 3, no, it stops. So you can see that although n equals 3, it's executed 1, 2, three, four times, so that's n plus one time. Okay, next we have the statement j equals one, and it's ran within the loop here. The loop itself only runs n times, so it takes some constant amount of time, four, and it's ran only n times because it's within the loop. Uh, next we have this while loop here, and the while loop itself runs n plus one time because j equals one, and then uh, j increases by one each time. So it takes some constant unit of time, call it c5, n plus one, but wait, this while loop is within a while loop, and that while loop runs n times, so we multiply this times n, and we get n squared plus n. All right, next we have sum equals sum plus one. It takes some constant unit of time, we call it c6, and it's ran n times from the inner loop here, and it's also ran n times from the outer loop. So the running time is n times n, which equals n squared. Uh, same for this statement here. It's ran n times within the inner loop, and n times within the outer loop, and it takes some constant unit of time, we'll call it c7. So it runs n times n times, which equals n squared. And last is i equals i plus one, um, and this statement costs some amount of time, we call it C8, and it's only ran on the outer while loop, so it's run in time. Okay, so now here we have all of our uh, costs and our times, and so what we're going to need to do is, we're going to need to multiply them and add them. So we need to multiply the costs uh, by their time. I'm sorry, there's a C8 here. And we need to, uh, to add them together to figure out the running time. Now, you can do that that way, or there's another way. You could just notice that the uh, largest number here would be n squared. And you can say that, oh, well this runs big theta of n squared or big O of n squared. Um, the more mathematical way, I will show you now. So first we have C1 times 1. So let's put down here total cost equals we have C1 times 1, which is C1, plus C2 times 1, which is C2, plus C3 times n, plus C3 times 1. So we have uh, C3, or plus C3, plus n times C3. And actually, 
let's go ahead and change C1 plus C2 plus C3 to some other constant number. We'll call that constant uh, C9 to help make our equation smaller. So let C1 plus C2 plus C3 equal C9. All right, so now we just have a C9 there, plus C, uh, plus N times C3. Okay, I didn't want to erase that there. So now we want to add C4 times N, so plus N times C4. Um, next we have C5 times N squared plus N, so we have a n times c5 plus n squared times c5 uh, now we have plus c6 times n squared and plus c7 times n squared so c6 oh, sorry n squared times c6 plus n squared times c7 plus we have our c8 here and, and uh, we multiply it by n so plus n times c8 so now this is going to give us our total cost. Uh, let's go ahead and group some of these. Let's group this n times c8 with this, uh, with all these variables here that are being multiplied by n as well. So plus n times c8. And now we can rewrite this equation again if we let um, c3 plus C4 plus C5 plus C8 equal, we'll call it C10. All right, so we're gonna let all that equal C10. So that's N times C3, N times C4, N times C5, and uh, N times C8. Let's go ahead and move this down one here because we're just grouping. Uh, plus n squared times c I believe that was 5 okay and we can move this over n times c8 so you can just see I'm just grouping um, the variables together so now we can rewrite this though we have c9 plus n times c subscript 10 All right, and then we still have our rest of the stuff down here. So we just got rid of all this here that we need to add. And we can just say that's n squared times some other constant because if we let uh, c6 plus c7 plus c5 equal some other constant, we'll call it c11. So let this equal c11. Then we get n squared times c11. And so now, our total cost equals some constant C9 plus N times some constant C10 plus uh, N squared times some constant we call C11. Kind of looks familiar. Um, if we rewrite this again, you can see that it is uh, C11 n squared plus C10 n plus C9. And if we replace the variables uh, C11, C10, and C9 with something like this, A n squared plus B n plus C. And you can see that the constants don't really matter. It's just the uh, this last uh, variable here that matters, the n squared. So this is equal to or belongs to uh, big theta of n squared. All right, thank you guys.